hello <clears throat> my name is Alan Schwab and I'm a head designer based in London welcome to my studio and welcome to this tutorial I hope you like it I hope you enjoy it and I hope you're gonna create a lot of beautiful um, bows because today we are gonna learn how to make a very beautiful cinema bow uh, on a headband and this is such an easy tutorial that you can even make it with your kids and it's very creative and it's uh, really fun and it's a great time spending together with your kids and grandkids a lot of creativity a lot of um, uh, steps that are very easy to follow but at the end uh, you create a really beautiful uh, hat piece that um, your kids or grandkids can wear and be very proud that they created this little piece themselves. So welcome to my tutorial. My name is Alana Schwab and I'm a hat designer and I'm happy to share this tutorial today with you. So today we will learn how to make beautiful cinema bows. Uh, it could be any color because cinema straw comes in a variety of different colors uh, or like a headband like this. It's very easy to make. Uh, I'm going to show you very simple steps and um, we're going to start with choosing the color and uh, I'm going to show you step by step how to create a really beautiful headband. Uh, I'm going to share the techniques that you can make um, if you're making it for yourself as a grown-up, <laughs> I would say, or some techniques that are easier to make for kids that do not involve a lot of hot irons or a lot of stitching, but, you know, just the little steps that you can um, uh, sort of like um, put aside because it's less uh, harmful and less uh, dangerous for little kids or those who, um, to whom it is challenging to use um, needles and irons even under supervisions of a grown-up. First of all, I want to show you that I have a wonderful material kit that includes all the materials that we will need today that you can, um, that has everything you need and you can create uh, a wonderful um, bow, cinema bow with your kids. It has, um, it, it, ha it has a veiling, it has a nice satin covered headband, cinema straw, you can choose any color that you like and I will uh, ship it to you. You have a little bottle for tap water, uh, a thread, a uh, matching color thread, little uh, glue, very cute little piece, uh, glue uh, pins and uh, you will also receive a video tutorial uh, that explains step by step how to create a beautiful headband. So if you would like to um, surprise your kids or create a really um, do it yourself afternoon. So this is a kit for you. The um, in the description, there is a link where you can purchase this kit uh, online on my website. You can choose any color that you like and uh, I will prepare it personally and ship it to you. It doesn't matter where you are. I ship internationally. So let's start. Uh, we're going to need, uh, first of all, we're going to need cinema straw. You can choose any color, uh, whatever you like. Uh, blue is really nice. I also have this lovely cranberry uh, color. So which one would you think would look nice? How about blue? I really like blue. And um, also, a very small piece of cinema straw is enough. So sometimes if you have uh, leftovers from your previous um, um, projects, you can use them. The only important thing that we have to cut material on the bias because other, uh, it's going to make it easier to create a beautiful uh, bow. And also later, the step when we have to steam, it will be much easier to stretch. And if you stay long enough with me, you'll see what I mean. Um, but uh, it has a lot of advantages cutting material on bias. In millinery, most of the things are done on the bias because it's the stretchiest part of the straw, like any woven material, and, and cinema straw is a woven material, and it's easy to stretch, it's easy to manipulate, uh, it's easy to create and mold the shape. So we're starting with, so I have a little piece of cinema straw and I'm going to use it. You can uh, pre prepare a template to begin with. Um, 
or you can just you know decide what what size of the bow you would like to create and so i would like to create something like that i'm gonna cut it on the bias so you see the bias is the diagonal line it's 45 degrees to salvage line 45 degrees to salvage line or 90 degrees to salvage line so this means that this is the bias this is how you find the bias line so now i'm going to cut the cinema straw on the bias there. another way how you can chew um, how you can uh, find the bias is just simply by stretching the straw on the diagonal and you see how nicely it stretches so this is the bias if you stretch the fabric and it doesn't stretch it means that this is not the bias this is just a straight line so you have to aim for this diagonal part of the cinema straw all right so i hope you're having a lovely day today it's sunny in london which is quite rare because this week was very rainy and um, cloudy so i'm really happy that today is the lovely nice weather now i'm going to trim the ends so what we're aiming for we need uh, we need this kind of shape it's your decision how big how wide uh, if you want a big bow so you cut a bigger piece if you want a smaller petite uh, kind of style of the bow so you cut a smaller piece because next thing what we're gonna do we're gonna trim the ends the ends and then we're gonna fold it inside so basically from all this piece all we're gonna have is the size of the bow so it's gonna look like that so always think ahead how big you want the bow to be and based on that you prepare your materials so the first way I'm going to show you how you can create, how you, um, what you do with the edge. I'm black on words, sorry. It was a long day. I had a very long tutorial with a student for six hours. We made amazing hats, but it, it's a bit um, tiring by the end of the day. So I'm sorry if I'm black on words, but um, I hope that you understand what I'm trying to say. So we need to fold, um, the uh, the edge of the of this piece so to prevent the fabric from fraying so i'm gonna use a little bit of water tap water oh and by the way i forgot to mention that all the materials that we will need today are in the description of the video cinema straw veiling satin headband any color you like they come in in, in quite a lot of different colors scissors um measuring tape if you would like to measure <laughs> the measure uh the piece that you're cutting before you cut it matching threads um little small scissors ta tailor pins we might need those uh we will need a steamer or you can use a kettle but be very careful with kettle because it's very very hot and it's definitely not for the kids so this part you have to cover on your own and Oh, and we might need a little glue. Well, it can be any size, doesn't matter. Yuhu glue is the best. And what else, what else, what else? Um, I think that's it. Oh, the iron, which is right here. Just, you know, the, the simplest iron, no steam. We need the iron and that's it. I think we're good to go. So I'm gonna plug in the iron. So uh, previously I said that I'm going to show you the part that is good for grown-ups and then I'm going to show a part that are really good and easy for the kids. So the first one with the iron, obviously um, I wouldn't suggest that you uh, let your little kids using the iron because they might easily burn themselves unless you trust your child. So it's, I'm, I'm leaving this for your, <laughs> for, for your supervision. So what we need to do first is to fold the edge about like quarter of an inch or half a centimeter. Try to make a really nice and neat fold. 
and I spray it with a little bit of water to soften the straw so it doesn't break because straws they break really really easy and what I'm gonna do now I'm going to iron the edge so that we seal to bond all these layers together and instead of this we get this so see this is how we prevent the um the edge from fraying and it looks much nicer and neater you can also double um fold if you like it will look even even nicer and neater but for now i'm just going to leave it as it is just one layer and we have to iron the whole length of the bow there and really press the iron also very important that you would like to use pre-stiffened cinema straw it's it's much easier pre-stiffened cinema straw is stiffer and um, when applying water um it's easier for for the material to bond if it's a non-stiffened cinema straw this will not really work so before you purchase the material uh make sure that your cinema straw is pre-stiffened or stiff or whatever it's called and now i'm going to show you the way what you can do uh, working with kids um again i'm going to spray with a little bit of water and i'm going to fold material so base the first step is absolutely the same Okay, so I'm just gonna neatly and carefully fold the fabric and just a little bit more. All right, and now I'm gonna use a little bit of glue, Yuhu glue or any fabric glue, whatever you have available. Uh, what's important that uh, it's um, um, it doesn't smell, it dries really fast and it dries clear. So this is why I prefer this glue. But if you have something else, it's absolutely up to you. And I'm applying a little bit of glue. So this part, any kid can do, and it's actually fun, applying um, a little bit of glue and then folding the fabric, letting the layers to stick together. I think any kid at any age can do this and really enjoy the process. And it's not as dangerous as using an iron. So just going to press with my fingers until the fabric is secured. And then I'm going to add a little bit more glue. And yep, and a little bit more. And in the meantime, I'm welcoming everyone who's joining me today for this tutorial live. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your likes. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, Please do uh, send a message or comment. Tell me where you're watching this tutorial from. How is your day? Uh, whether you like this tutorial, enjoying learning something new, or and whether you would love to make something like that um, together with your kids. I think it could be a really nice, um, you know, time spent together, especially weekends is coming up. Uh, it also could be a fun project for a birthday party and, uh, you know, kids making you know, their own little bows and then they put them on together and they share all their experiences. I think that just should be absolutely amazing. And watching from New Jersey, Noma, hello, wild New Jersey, amazing. Well, hello from London, and thank you so much for joining. Okay, so we have two sides. I'm just going to move the iron away. I think we're done with the iron for now. We're not going to need it. So basically, iron is out of the picture. So this one is, is ironed, and this one is glued. So there's no much difference, to be honest. I just want to show you, actually, if you fold it twice and how it might look it's actually on this side yeah so usually if i make um these headbands uh with a bow i would fold twice because it, it really looks much much nicer hello from morocco shooter hello wow morocco that's amazing 
That's absolutely amazing. It's on my list, by the way. I really, really, really want to visit one day. It's such a beautiful country. Hello from... Uh, okay, I can't read, Marianne. Uh, hello, Elena. Hello. Hello, everyone. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so, and nice to see all of you. It's so lovely. Okay, so, can you see the difference? This is double layer. It looks more solid and um, less chances to, um, to, you know, sometimes the material just, um, you know, it's... Um, What's the word? If there's no stitching and if there's no um, like uh, stitching with the sewing machine or by hand with time, material might um, open up. So if you have one layer, it mostly will happen, especially steaming. But if you have two layers, it's definitely going to stay um, secured. So just, you know, for you to decide how it's best and what is uh, fun for you to do. Uh, hello from Ghana. Hello. Um, thank you for a beautiful lesson, watching and learning from y Johannes. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. We have a very international team. I'm really flattered. Thank you so much for all of you for joining. Really amazing. Just made my day. <laughs> okay, so the next step would be we're going to fold these two parts together. I mean, you can also fold these two sides if you like. Actually, it will look much nicer. Uh, but if you want to, if you're doing this with your kids and they don't really have a lot of patience, you can just skip this step. It's not that important. But if you want to make it more neat, then I would suggest you do this step. And it's either you, um, you know, use the iron or as I showed previous way you can use a little bit of glue both ways work fine and but i'm just going to use the iron because it's a bit faster uh, we can use a little bit of water to soften the straw also water extract the stiffener which acts like a glue in a way uh, which is sort of like activated under heat and pressure of the iron right and if you want to make even a neater, a more secure, um, you know, seal of the of the edges, then you take the next step with a sewing machine. But it's not necessarily, and definitely not with the kids, because it's going to take quite a lot of time. So, and now what we're doing is we're folding, uh, not folding, just overlapping a little bit, right? So again. If you're making this piece with your kids, I would suggest let them use the glue. Or if you want them to learn more about stitching and sewing, they can use they can use a thread. Okay, ideally it has to be matching thread, but I'm not very prepared today, so I'm just gonna use whatever I have. So overlapping, right? And either use a little bit of glue just in between two layers. So I'm just gonna show as one part with the glue, just a little bit here on the side. Again, don't overdo with the glue because otherwise it's gonna to stick to everything, your fingers, the, uh, and if it's a darker color, you're gonna be shown on the cinnamon straw. So, you know, just a little bit, yeah. And then I am pressing with my fingers and because this glue dries really fast, it will attach in just a minute or so. There, I think it's already dried and I think it's already looks great. So, and the second part, I'm, I will stitch with the thread. I will start from inside to hide the knot, although it doesn't really matter because everything is going to be covered, but I'm just trying to be, um, you know, more um, professional, I guess. <laughs> this is what I would usually do every time making hats, the knots and inside. So you hide them so that the surface is much nicer and neater. So I'm just, um, what I'm doing is just a running stitch, regular running stitch. Okay, could be quite long stitches or short stitches, whatever you like. 
It's quite easy also for kids, depending on the age and how comfortable they feel uh, with the with the teaching. But uh, well, I do have a lot of kids coming to my workshops, and they make bows. They also make a lily hat. Um, where is it? Just want to show you this really lovely lily hat, which. Um, I also have a tutorial and material kit for that, so do check my website. Um, and also, mostly glue is involved for the kids, and it looks very, very nice and neat. So, uh, what I was trying to say, that a lot of kids come to this workshop and they lot, uh, learn about hat making, they make the hats themselves, uh, using um, threads and needles and scissors, and even irons, and they enjoy the process so, so, so much. One of my little students uh, from Texas, she loved the fascination she made so much that she decided to be a fashion designer. And honestly, I feel so, so happy because when you influence uh, the kids doing something that you love and they observe they learn and want to move forward with that and learn even more this is the best thing that can ever ever happen so it feels really good so now we have this hello <laughs> we have this piece um, a circle and now we're going to create um a bow so yeah we're coming closer to uh, finishing line and what i'm going to do i'm going to use a steamer. Let me plug it in the socket. Okay. Yeah. So if you don't have, this is a garment steamer, very basic, but it does the job with fascinators, with cinema straw. Uh, it's not very expensive, very affordable um, little baby. Uh, it doesn't really work for felts because it's not that strong, but it definitely works for cinema straws. It's not very hot i mean not very strong and hot so you can still let your kids use it uh, so my little students do use this steamer but i wouldn't suggest to use a more professional steamer or more um strong steamer because that can end up in um, you know some tears and burns because the steam is very hot and if you're using it incorrectly accidents might happen so i would suggest first test it yourself before allowing your kids to use a steamer um, and then show your child how to use the steamer and um, under your supervision only under your supervision yes so pressing the button and putting it on and again what i said before it's very important that the cinema straw this part on the bias you can see the diagonal lines so it means that it's beautifully on the bias and it will allow us to stretch the fabric and create beautiful shapes when the steamer will start working okay it needs a moment okay so now it starts you see it's not it's not that um it's not that strong, but I mean, you still want to be quite careful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to steam the straw. The beauty of a steamer that it makes the straw very soft, like water. Well, it is water, but also because it's hot, it helps to mold the shape. So here it goes. I'm steaming. Maybe I'll just show it like this. I'm steaming and I'm starting folding the bow. Okay. And again, because it's on the bias, you see what I'm doing? Let me put it closer to the camera. So because it's on the bias, I can stretch the fabric and manipulate the shape there it's really really lovely see so when the fabric is dry i wouldn't be able to do that the, the straw is too stiff but once it softens because of the steamer because of the steam you can fold and manipulate the straw to create a little bow so 
I think it's a bit thick, so I'm going to try to make it slightly thinner. So I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to just create folds like this from one side and from another side, you see, like this. So let's do it again. One, two folds, three folds, and the bottom line goes up. So now it's a bit thinner, not, not a bit, it's like twice thinner. So I really like the way it looks right now. And let's give it a little bit of a shape, just like that. There. Okay, lovely. I think I like it. I think I like it. And I'm just going to move it for now. And I'm going to use a pin just to secure this way you can also use art clips and i think it's a bit safer with kids because you know sharp needles and stuff but you can use a little clip it will hold um the middle of the bow i think it looks lovely it's uh, much bigger than the one that i initially have or with this one but still i think it looks really what do you think nice it highlights my eyes my eyes are blue green gray but Yes, it's still nice. Okay, this is something else that you might think about what color to choose. What color are your eyes? Uh, green or gray or blue or darker color? You know, what is your skin tone? Okay, so the next step would be we're going to create the bias strip, this one. So there are many tutorials that I have uh, that explain how to make the bias strip, but let's do it again. Um, we just need, a, again, cut it on the bias, on the bias, and so I would say measure like 9 or 10 centimeters, 10 centimeter width of the bias, and fold it, and we're going to trim the end, okay, so bias strip is also easy to make, and it can be also be really lovely uh, accessory. I apply some water so that we soften the straw and now what I'm going to do is to stretch because it's on the bias it stretches really really nicely I need the iron again okay wait 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 such a mess such a mess mm -hmm. okay. Wait, I need the kettle. okay just give me a second please oh. I'm so not organized today. All right, so now what we have is this lovely stretched strip of cinnamon straw. And I'm gonna show you how to make a bias strip. So I fold it in half, okay? Fold it in half so that we know where the center of the bias strip is. And then what I do, I fold towards the center and then I fold the other side towards the center, slightly overlapping. And then I fold the fabric again. Okay, there. Folding the fabric again. And iron. So iron, you can't really use glue at this point. So if you're working with kids, um, you either show them how to make the bias tree by, by showing um, with your example first. Uh, or you just help your kids to make the bias strip and they can just um, uh, play with it later, creating curls. This is the next fun part that we're going to do. So again, center line right here. And then one of the sides folding towards the center. And then the other side, the opposite side, folding towards the center. And then we fold it together. Okay. So just like that and try to keep the same width but um, if it doesn't work that's fine this technique needs a little bit of uh, practicing practice makes it better but uh, you know just give it a go and you'll see how 
fun it is. And obviously this technique works for any width of bias strip. So it can be the narrow, it can be really, really wide. So it means that you know, to begin with, you have to cut a wider piece of cinema straw. And just keep in mind that whatever part cut measurement you have for bias strip, because of the stretching, it's gonna reduce twice in size. So have it in the take it into consideration when you make bias strips. All right, so I'm gonna trim the edge. And now we have all our ingredients. We actually know we, we need another ingredient. There's a veil. It's the fun part of the hat making. I think that, you know, for kids, it's going to be the most favorite part ever. So how do we measure how big piece of veil we need? So to be honest, it's up to you. You can, you know, use a lot of veil or you can just measure a little bit, just about the same size as one half of the, you see, for example, here we have this bow. I don't know what it is, like eight centimeters. And then the veil is slightly, slightly longer so that we can just see it as a background but not too but not too not too long so i would say i would like something like that yeah so it just a little bit a little bit bigger a little bit longer than the actual bow so this is going to be the center and i'm gonna measure it in half and then i'm gonna cut it right so and what are we going to do now is we need to stitch we need to stitch both ends together. So the easiest way how I do it, I just fold them, the ends together, both of them, like that, right? And, okay. And I'm just going to, I'm just gonna use a white thread. It's not matching, but at least, something similar in color all right yeah and not okay and in the meantime i want to say hello to everyone who's joining us today to this live session um there's quite a lot of people who are joining i'm really happy so thank you for that and i hope you're enjoying the tutorial and what I'm doing with this is, so we gather the ends together and then I'm stitching through and overlapping so that just to keep it together and stitching through just like that. And voila, it's secured. So we can cut the thread and we can cut the extra of the veiling. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to find I'm gonna open this veil just right, right like this. And so I'm opening like this. So this is the center. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna fold all of this fabric together like this. And then I'm gonna stitch through here to secure the bow. To do something with that so we need a knot it always help when they have a knot and and in the meantime while i'm stitching this uh hat piece uh, i want to say that um, all the materials that i'm using the veil and the cinema straw and the satin headband I'm using from my supplier my milliner supplier based in the UK the trimming company and the trimming company is very generous and it's giving all my followers meaning you a 10% discount when you purchase all any of your materials uh, with the code Elena at the checkout all the details are in the description of this video I'm very happy to share this with you because they have a lot of wonderful ma uh, materials millinery specifically high quality materials uh, that I'm using for my own uh, projects, for my own uh, bespoke orders, for my collections. And I'm happy to share that with you as well. And also for this uh, tutorial, I have 
uh, a material kit that you can order on my website and I will deliver it, um, doesn't matter where you are, we'll deliver internationally. And it has everything that you need, the veil, the headband, a little spray bottle, um, the glue, you can even choose the colors. And I will personally um, put everything together and send it to you and you can have a really lovely do-it-yourself project with your kids or just uh, you can purchase it for yourself and just enjoy making the tutor um, this uh, tutorial, which you will also receive a video uh, where you can um, follow step by step and create this really beautiful bow. Okay, so, and in the meantime, I am finished. And now I need to stitch through to secure the bow. I might need a thimble because it's quite heavy. Um, it's a lot of layers. So I'm just gonna stitch all of that. I might make a mess with the thread, but it's okay because all of that is going to be covered. And then I'm gonna make a secure stitch by going into the loop twice. One, two, it creates a knot and then you can safely cut the thread. Okay, so now we have all our ingredients for making a beautiful bow. So we have cinnamon bow, we have a veiling. Oh, it's so nice. We have a veiling, we have our bias strip, and we have headband, satin covered headband. It's you know very flexible and it's very soft, so very easy to wear. All right, so uh, so at this point you can either um, secure with the stitching. Or if you're doing together with your child, you can use a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue. It, you know, it's, it's much, it's much easier for kids rather than sewing. It's really hard for them also to sew and they're very not used to use um, thimbles. So just apply a little bit of glue, uh, which is included in the material kit as well. And just apply the veiling right here. Um, and press and wait until it's um, until it dries. Just gonna take a few moments because uh, the Yuho glue dries really, really fast. It's one of my favorite um, glues ever. And hello, Kayla from Western Cape. Wow, amazing. Welcome to this tutorial. And I'm glad you joined everyone else who's joining. Um, Hope you're all enjoying this uh, tutorial. And okay, so it's already dried. So you can either place it like this on the headband or like that. It's absolutely up to you. This is your design. You you decide what you do. You can also add some, um, you know, um, what it's called, um, like stitch some pearls or some feathers. I mean, really be creative. Add anything you like, whatever you can find at home beautiful, um, you know, uh, sparkling thread so you can stitch somewhere on, on one of the sides. You can add some beads, um, I don't know, some brushes that you have. Really no limit for imagination. What I'm trying to show is a simple technique, but you can take it your way and create really bespoke uh, bow that is, you know, representing your personality in your color, in your style, in your size, in the, with the veiling, without the veiling, really so many different options and everybody is just making it in, in, in certain ways. Um, so for example, I'm teaching a fascinating head workshop in my class in person in my studio. And I've been teaching this class for quite a few years and I'm teaching the same technique. And it's amazing because everybody every student learned the same technique but the result of the hat was always always different and i'm still amazed how how it um you know how many variations of the same design could be created um hello edu cat uh, i love your energy uh, what skill in in threading the needle I wish you all the best in your future. 
um, and the rest of the 2024. Thank you so much. Um, uh, well, the threading the needle, it's, uh, yeah, that's quite a skill, but it's getting harder and harder with, you know, uh, I think I'm going to need glasses. But uh, the way I do the knot, my grandmother taught me, even when I didn't even think that I'm going to do um, hat making, but somehow she taught me that skill. I didn't even like sewing, so I didn't know why I needed it. So let me show you how I do it, because I, um, some of you already asked how I make the knot, so let me show you. Um, it's quite a tricky technique, but if you master it, it's really easy and fun. So what we do, double thread, overlap your finger like this, so sort of you're creating an, an X. Can you see that properly? I hope it's really hard to angle. And, and then you sort of like twist and stretch. And then what you have is a really nice, neat knot. And let's do it again. So around your finger, cross and pull or whatever it, this manipulation called and stretch okay and you have a really nice and neat knot okay so let's finalize the design so well I prefer the veil to be at the back okay and I like my headbands I like my bows on the side and uh, we're gonna secure so first of all we can stitch this part like give it a little bit of more stitching uh again with the kids you can use a little bit of glue you can also use hot glue if you have at home for this hot glue is perfect and i think kids will enjoy gluing rather than the stitching obviously but if you do the stitching what i can suggest is because it's satin covered headband it's so easy to stitch through can you see I'm just stitching through oh. and I'm going through the veil and through the through the bow and I definitely need my thimble because uh, I wouldn't be able to do it without and then I'm doing the same I'm going through okay coming out on this side Okay, and stitching through. Okay, like this. So if you decide to create headbands, uh, I would suggest go for satin covered headbands. They come in variety of, uh, of sizes, uh, colors. So this is a narrow one, which is perfect for kids. Um, the wider ones, uh, like really wide, narrow, um, different shapes and it's really easy to use because you know stitching through headband uh, through the fabric is much easier than um, working with a plastic headband so from my experience it's so 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 much easier and okay give me a minute okay I'm just gonna thread a new one <laughs> It's not easy threading. It's not easy at all. Okay. So we can um, we can follow up with a little bit more stitches. Okay. But now um, I'm going to skip that step. So I just don't keep you too <laughs> for too long. And we're just going to uh, go to the next step of steaming the bias strip. And we're going to... Uh, sort of like twisted um, around the bow to secure it even more neatly and plus it's going to cover all the mass of the threads and stitching and plus it's going to be a really cute uh, decoration sort of like I made it right here okay so I'm going to need our steamer again because it will help to create to make um, the bias strip a bit softer and while we're waiting um, well, thank you so much for sharing the tip. Uh, I have subscribed. Thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate that. Um, 
my late aunt would ask me to to thread her needle well that's a good skill to <laughs> to learn um okay so uh no worries at all and thank you so much for your comments i'm actually enjoying reading your comments and reading your thoughts and uh what's useful what's what's not so useful so please do leave your comments if i won't be able to reply now i would be happy to read them later and reply when i have the time so please please leave your thoughts here for me for, to read and to share with others because quite a lot of us from different countries which is amazing okay so a little bit of steaming you see and it's it's quite soft so i can't really do this here because you know it's it's not seems it's quite stiff but when i steam this little bias strip it becomes very soft so what i'm going to try try to do from the bottom you know to make it neat from the bottom and while it's still steaming i'm stretching and i'm stretching and what's the word for that and um, covering i don't know um you name it <laughs> and up till here so as long as all the stitches are covered and as long as um the bias strip helps to keep the the bow secured to the headband we're done we're done for now i'm just gonna switch off this for now and what we have to do is to secure all of that with the stitching so again, um, it might be best you do it with a stitching rather than glue, because I know glue is easy and for kids it's uh, really fun. But in order to keep this part uh, secured, stitching is always better. So you can just um, cover this step uh, for your kids, just quickly create uh, the stitches. And the next part, they can create a little curl, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'm just going to start the stitches from inside to hide the knot and then so I'm stitching and then I'm going through the same hole to the other side same hole is so that you don't see the thread so it looks very neat and invisible and just you know create quite a few stitches to make it secured and so your purpose is to stitch here to stitch here to make it not move and keep um you know in place really no words today <laughs> really no words today it's so hard to find words sometimes okay so once i'm happy with the stitching i'm leaving a little bit of a knot not a knot um a loop here and then i go back I go back and I stitch. Okay, let me just find, open the loop. And then you go through the loop, stretch, oh, it's breaking again, stretch. And this helps to secure the thread so it doesn't come out. And then you cut. Ta-da! Almost finished. Almost finished. It's so exciting. It's almost finished. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much. Just seeing this now. Hello, Caroline, Catherine. Uh, may I kindly ask how I can possibly make orders and get the 10% discount you spoke about earlier on? Um, press the three... Do oh, thank you. Uh, do. <laughs> that, that's the... So, just please go into the description and there's all the all the information i listed the name of the materials with the link so it's easier for you for the cinema for the cinema straw for the veil for the headband uh you buy all the materials and before the checkout um you put the code elena and you get 10 percent discount and the materials will be shipped for you uh so Yes, very easy. You just go into the description of the video. The link is uh, right there and also description of the materials with a direct link to specific um, fabrics that you need. 
and and that's it and then 10 percent you get by putting elena code at the checkout so um happy shopping and choose any colors there's so many different colors of cinema straw it's amazing and sometimes really hard to choose um the veiling as well there's so many different types of veiling this is the basic veiling there's a merry widow there's a veiling with pearls the veiling with the little dots there's veiling with silver with gold oh my god uh just the experience of choosing the materials and thinking about design is fascinating okay so the last part i think that's the the, the most amazing and fun part for all the kids and even for grown-ups is using a little bit of steam And, well, we all have this in the kitchen. This comes from metallic foil or a cling film. Or you can use a pen, a pencil, anything tubular size. You can choose any width you like. Uh, you can use uh, threads. You can even use uh, your fingers. But that might be a bit hot. So what you do, right next to the steamer. See what I'm doing? I'm placing the by strip on the tube and I'm steaming it just give it like I don't know five seconds ten seconds then take it off the steam now keep it like this hold it for five seconds count one two three four five it, it that's enough for the material to cool down when material cools down it adopts the shape it molds into shape and what happens is Ta-da! Isn't it lovely? And we have a little curl. And then you can just leave it as it is, like this, or we can we can place it right here. And then you can just secure with a little stitch um, or a little a type of glue. Um, also, you can create a different color of bias strip and put it around uh, or stitch it right here and um, like you see, this is the pink one. And the way I did it is I went around the headband, a little bit of curl, and then I stitched it right here. So it doesn't come out, but it just like stays put there. And here it just goes up and it just looks really nice. And what you can also do is this little edge, just cut it 45 degrees and it looks really nice, sharp, and you know, very dynamic, beautiful beautiful flowing so let me let me try it on and as the last touch as the last touch what you can do is we can uh, re-steam the bow because there were a lot of manipulations and you know the bow looks a bit poorly right now so what we can do is okay i'm steaming it giving it a little bit of shape okay so you can also do it in front of your mirror so you can steam and then put it on and see how you like it uh, and then you go back steaming and reshaping and then because it's on the bias as i said before you can always stretch the ends and it just right nicely opens up the you know this the bow yeah there so you you sort of like mold it with your hands supporting from each side and then just manipulating into a shape and then you take it off the steam it cools down and voila it's so 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 pretty uh we can just twist this a little bit more and okay the moment of truth is all right i think it's fun so it can be any color you can also put it right here or on this side i think it's nice when it just you know you know open and amorphic and if you don't want the bow to be that tall you can always re-steam it and lower it a little bit it's very much depends what you feel comfortable with you can create a smaller bow like this one it's much smaller and you see how i decorated it with a little um bead red bead and already creates a character and this is the bias strip so i created i made a really really long bias strip and i put it around like this 
and twist it here and then I stitched it underneath so it doesn't stick out anywhere but it just like goes around and around and around and creates a really lovely lovely shape so we have three different types of bows uh different colors and um uh, I do hope you like it. It's a really fun, easy to follow tutorial. And uh, I'm just going to read some messages, uh, your uh, comments. Just give me a oh, sorry. A second. Um, I'm enjoying this. Thank you so much. Uh, I will look at its materials. Um, hard to get here i have get um so this is from caroline well caroline you're welcome uh have a look at the materials have a look there's a lot of different uh fabrics uh felt straws fascinators bases uh sometimes it's easier just to buy a base or head bases and then just focus on decorating headbands veils uh, stiffness um everything everything at all you need for your hat making and then following my other tutorials you can create uh, more amazing hats and hat pieces um thank you so much uh thank you catherine um i do i have uh the wow that's beautiful lovely little headband very lovely thank you very much have a nice weekend well thank you so much i'm so 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 happy you liked it um uh, i'm really thrilled i'm really thrilled because it was a long day a uh, very long workshop amazing workshop with my student but I'm quite excited but I still decided to go out here live and show you this little amazing technique uh, so you can enjoy maybe create something of a weekend or plan and create something with your kids or grandkids it's always um, nice to create something with your children because you never know uh, how exactly they're going to take this creativity forward and they're always so creative sometimes you're just amazed oh my god it's just it's so simple but so genius and it just comes from kids and they are our inspiration so thank you so much uh wishing you all a lovely weekend uh thank you for being with me a whole hour most of you a whole hour i'm really thrilled uh thank you so much for those who missed this tutorial from the beginning it will be on my youtube channel so uh you can watch um the tutorial you can always comment and i will always come back uh with the with the answer um uh, maybe not immediately but as soon as i can i will always reply um, as, as I also mentioned, all my followers, um, you have the 10% dis uh, discount from my trusted supplier, the trimmings company based in the UK. All you have to do is just use the code Elena at the checkout and you can, uh, the, the, all the materials uh, that we need are on the website and I have a description of what you need for this tutorial, including the links for the materials. Uh, you can also you're welcome to have a look at my material kits on my website. There's also a link. And um, this tutorial with a bow, you will receive uh, the materials of your choice. So you can choose any color that you like. A headband with a veil. You're going to have uh, a little bottle and a Yoohoo glue, matching thread. So basically everything you need, including video tutorial that I will personally pack myself and uh, send it to uh, any country and destination where you are. So I want to say again, thank you so much. Um, and thank you all for your lovely messages. It's really a pleasure to read them all. It's such a wonderful feedback and I'm ready to go for the weekend after this tutorial because you're giving me so much energy and I'm really happy. So thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do and uh, hit the notification button because um, you don't want to miss my next tutorials. Uh, I'm going to prepare something for the next week for a uh, tutorial live. And if you have any suggestion, do comment. Uh, I would be happy to um, take your suggestion into consideration and create a video tutorial for the, on that subject. And... Um, Yes, I'll see you next week. Enjoy your weekend and happy hat making, happy creativity, whatever you're making. Um, thank you so much again and I'll see you all next week. Have a lovely, lovely weekend. And again, if you have any questions, please do ask and I will be happy to reply to all your messages. Bye. See you next week.